Hi, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at how to multiply fractions by thinking about them in terms of multiples. Let's go ahead and get started. We're in our math journals on pages 234 and 235, and at the top of page 234 we see a pair of pictures. These are circles that have been divided into eight parts, and each of those eight parts, only one piece has been shaded in. That means that's a fractional uh, representation of one-eighth. Now, if I create an addition equation to represent that amount, I'm basically being asked to add the number of eighths I see. Well, I see two. One plus one gives me two, so one-eighth plus one-eighth gives me two-eighths. Of course, when I'm adding fractions with like denominators, I never add the denominators. So, when I think about this picture in a different frame of mind, multiplication, I remember that multiplication is basically repeated addition. So when I look at these two uh, fractional circles, I ask myself, how many circles do I see? Well, I see two. How many groups of eighths do I see? Okay, Or, or how many groups of one-eighth are in each group? There are one-eighth in each group, and there are two groups. So when I represent that as a multiplication problem, it is basically two groups of one-eighth in each group, which is going to give me a total of two-eighths. Two times one-eighth gives me two-eighths, as the picture shows us. Now the third part of this question for number one, what is the second multiple of eighth, or one-eighth? I'm basically being asked to skip count by ones, or think about the multiples of one eighth. Well, what comes after one eighth? Well, that would be two eighths, followed by three eighths, and then four eighths, and so on. So when I am thinking about multiples, I'm just basically skip counting by the starting number. Well, if my starting number is one, I'm just counting up by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. So what is the second multiple in that row? Well, that would be 2 eighths. Now, just below on problem number 2, we see a number line, a different way to represent fractional amounts. We start at 0, or 0 fifths, and we end in 10 fifths. Okay. Now, the intervals in between are spaced out by fifths, 1 fifth. You can see that up here at the top. These little jumping lines show us how we got from one fifth to the next. Now, represented as an addition equation, I would have to write the number of one fifths I see and then add them all together. So that's the third, about the fourth. Oh man, my my hands already getting tired. If there was only some other way. I could make this easier and save my poor aching wrist. Well, there is. It's called multiplication. See, up here at the top, we see a collection of fifths. And if I count them all, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can, instead of writing out all of the fifths, I can just tell you that there are six of them. And when I multiply six times one fifth, I get the same answer as if I were to add them. Six groups with one-fifth in each group would give me six-fifths. And so when they ask the question, what is the sixth multiple? Well, you've already solved it. It's this number, six-fifths. So when I am multiplying a fraction by a whole number, I'm basically asking, to what a point did I skip count? Okay. Now, let's take a look at page 235. Now here, you're asked to uh, come up with a uh, multiplication problem that has the answer provided for you. So I'm going to be thinking about factors of the number that is my numerator. Okay, so 4 is my numerator. So I need to think about what are some... Uh, factor combinations that I could use to get to 4. What times what gives me 4? Well, there's two combinations. I could either multiply 1 times 4, or I could multiply 2 times 2. Okay? 
So basically, I need to come up with a problem that gives me an answer of 4 twelfths. So how could I group uh, twelfths where my answer is a product of 4 twelfths? Well, I could either have one group, and there are 4 twelfths in that group, or I can think of it a different way, and I can write it as 4 times... One twelfth, four groups with one twelfth in each group, and that would give me the same answer for twelfths. Now, there's another way I can think about that, because I know that two times two gives me four. So I could also represent this problem like this: I have two groups, and in each group I have two twelfths. Two times two gives me four, so that would give me four groups of twelfths otherwise known as 4 twelfths. So the thing you need to remember is that when I am multiplying, when I am multiplying two factors together, one of those factors can be represented as the multiple, and the other number or factor can be represented to what degree or to what point along that number line did I skip count to. Okay. So just like I did with my fifths, I'm just skip counting upwards, or I'm counting multiples till I get to that point. So down here at uh, problem number seven, it's asking us the question, uh, what is the multiple of the unit fraction? Okay. Uh, so if I'm skip counting by eighths and seven eighths is a multiple, well, where's my starting point? Okay. So I would start with 1 eighth, because just like we did in, on page 234, I skip counted by eighths, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, and so on. Okay, if I continued that trend, I would eventually hit 7 eighths. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm thinking about that bottom number, the denominator, and I'm thinking, what was my starting point if I was skip counting. So if 4 fifths is the fourth multiple in a line of fractions, where was my starting point? Well, just like I did with 7 eighths, my starting point was 1 eighth. The unit fraction for 4 f fifths, I almost forgot which, well, my denominator one, is going to be 1 fifth. So that's basically it. I am just using my knowledge of multiplication to help me uh, find the answers to these multiplication problems that involve some fractions. So if you can skip count by ones or twos in the, in the case of problem 6a, uh, then you can find the unit fractions and the multiples uh, that correspond. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact your teacher, either through Canvas or have your parents send them an email. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.